So far we have learned that the word of God is complete and lacking nothing required for faith and godliness. We've also learned that all other ideologies and authorities must be subject to the scriptures. Today, Pastor Bartlett will give us some examples for application. There is no need for us to believe that the word of God all by itself is inadequate in any way. There are commandments and principles in the Bible to address every area of our lives. Psalm 19 verses 7 to 11 testify to the truth of this fact. The law of the Lord is perfect and preserves one's life. The rules set down by the Lord are reliable and impart wisdom to the inexperienced. The Lord's precepts are fair and make one joyful. The Lord's commands are pure and give insight for life. The commands to fear the Lord are right and endure forever. The judgments given by the Lord are trustworthy and absolutely just. They are of greater value than gold, than even a great amount of pure gold. They bring greater delight than honey, than even the sweetest honey from a honeycomb. Yes, your servant finds moral guidance there. Those who obey them receive a rich reward. New English translation. The Bible is a complete revelation. It needs no assistance from us. If we are sincerely seeking after truth, we will have nothing to fear from sola scriptura, by scripture alone. Genuine truth seekers need to have a deep reverence for biblical evidence. In Acts 17, 10 to 12, we read the following. The brothers sent Paul and Silas off to Berea at once during the night. When they arrived, they went to the Jewish synagogue. These Jews were more open-minded than those in Thessalonica, for they eagerly received the message, examining the scriptures carefully every day, to see if these things were so. Therefore, many of them believed, along with quite a few prominent Greek women and men. New English translations. The Berians were said to be more open-minded than the Thessalonians because after they had listened eagerly to the message of Paul and Silas, they searched the scriptures day after day to see if Paul and Silas were teaching the truth. As a result of their diligent day-to-day -day searching, many of them believe the gospel. The members of the body of Christ should be encouraged to search out the scriptures for themselves, to study the great doctrines of the Bible, and to draw their own conclusions. I believe that every Christian has the responsibility to thoroughly explore the Bible and treat it as God's word to all people and not merely as a textbook for their own denomination. When they do so, they should not be looked upon as persons who are rebellious or confused. Every Christian should be a truth seeker and should never leave the pursuit of truth, no matter what the cost. As persons begin to really study the Bible and seek to discover what it says without looking at it through the filter of their own belief system, they will begin to see a 
beauty and harmony in the word that they never knew was there. The Bible will become a new book. Since they are no longer trying to make their study reach a preconceived or predetermined goal, they may discover that much of their previous Bible study had been nothing more than trying to prove the doctrines of their denomination from the Bible. If the doctrines we have been taught and have believed are authentic, the study of God's word will serve to reinforce our belief system. A true Bible scholar must try to be as open and honest with the biblical text as he or she can possibly be. It is the work of a serious student of the Bible to carefully study the text, regardless of how closely or not the text may agree with their own belief system. We should endeavor not to force the scriptures to accommodate our denominational theology. We should accept each statement of scripture for what it teaches and align our theology with the word of God. We are not to try to make the Bible say what we think it should say. Rather, we are to go to the Bible and bring ourselves and our theology into harmony with it. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. once noted that whenever we are confronted with situations that require us to take a stand, cowardice will ask the question, is it safe to take such a position? Expediency will ask the question, is it prudent or politically correct? to take such a position? Vanity will ask the question, is it popular to take such a position? But conscience will ask the question, is it right to take such a position? Every true disciple of Jesus Christ must be willing, whenever it becomes necessary, to take a position that may neither be safe, prudent, or popular. He or she must be prepared to take the position that conscience says is right, even though to do so may regulate them to the minority, and even though they may be faced by a powerful majority. Too often, we have decided to take the position of least resistance because our spiritual spinal columns are weak. May God help us to always take a stand on the side of right and never to be ashamed or afraid of being identified with Jesus Christ or his cause. What we must endeavor to ensure is that our consciences are saturated with the raw, unadulterated word of God. We must be honest in our study of the scriptures and true to our conscience. We should ask ourselves the following question. How far should I go in compromising my conscience? by teaching things that I know are not biblically sound. Our primary motivation for studying God's word should be a desire to achieve personal spiritual integrity and honesty. Paul's exhortation in 2 Corinthians 10 verses 4 and 5 that the weapons of our warfare are not human weapons, but are made powerful by God for tearing down strongholds, was not talking about warding off devils and demons. No, 
The weapons of our warfare are powerful to tear down arguments and every arrogant philosophy that are raised up against the truth of God, and to take every thought captive to make it obey Christ. Paul vividly depicts that all beliefs must bow, must be pushed back, and must conform to the knowledge of God. How does our attitude measure up to this? Until next time, think on these things.